Hello, this is a UGR update. I am Gloria Borger, and we are on Stormwatch today. This morning, believe it or not, it certainly does not seem like rain, but of course it might. Uh, some places can see about six inches of snow. Uh, let's go ahead and take this over to Michael Wright for this morning's game review. Thanks, Gloria. Home of the Brave is full of negotiation, a little bit of blackmail, as well as alliances and scandals, uh, much like our current political system. Players are going to compete for influence over their different specific spectrums, as well as political positions, gaining supporters and affecting the United States politics, all so that they can achieve their primary goals and thusly win the game. You'll notice, Gloria, that as you can see, the game comes a large amount of cards, a huge board, and a ton of different things you can do on your turn. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it's like to try and become the most important and most influential person in your party of the United States of America. So here we have Home of the Brave and what you're going to be getting in the game, the Kickstarter version of the game. As you can see, there are six different players. Here you've got Derek, Tom, Mitch, Tess, Amanda, and John, and they all have their own political domains. The Republicans, the Democrats, and even a gangster class, as well as a couple of the other random ones. You're going to have a Path of Bravery on the board, the domain area of the board, this thing over here, these guys here are your hidden player uh, things which you use to hide different things behind you, as well as your national mall where you're going to be getting different uh, currency from. As well as the end, you're going to have a recess area and where you can collect additional cards and even the vote. Throughout the game, you're going to be voting on things and playing cards. And because of that, you're going to have each your own player deck. And in each player deck, there's going to be a different options here. You've got these star cards here, which are kind of like your political agendas. You've got negative press cards or cards that are going to affect you negatively. These ones here are your second and first cards in which you're going to be using here's right here let me see we've got the second cards as well as the first cards here and these are what you're going to be starting with as you go throughout the game you're going to be collecting first ones and then second ones as you progress on the path of bravery and then there's of course tutorial cards and your starting cards in the deck over here you're going to have the player icons which will indicate their demo that where you are on the domain and whether or not you're the party leader of that domain you're going to have voting chits you're going to have um points as well as dollars and then of course time tokens which you'll be using on your cards that will uh, insinuate time passing and gaining of certain victory points speaking of victory points these are the victory points and these are the neutral cards you'll be drawing throughout the game you're also going to have a player standee or miniature depending on what the kickstarter says and you'll be using that to move up and down the path this is pretty much what you're going to be getting the board as well as a bag full of cubes and even the large rule book for home of the brave let's go ahead and talk about how to Play the game. So to begin the game for Home of the Brave, you're going to be selecting one of the six political leaders. You can choose people from the Republic or person from the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, journalists, gangsters, and more. When you've selected your character, you're going to be getting one of these boards here that hides your character's influence cubes and all that stuff, currency, money, all this good stuff. And you're going to be using those throughout the game in order to play cards. You're also going to get some starting cards that you place on the board. These cards you can use as actions on your turn. You can play cards from your hand as actions as well as discarding them to gain different resources. There's three main types of resources. You got this one here, you got this one here, and then of course you got the different color cubes which are going to affect each and every party in the game. And you're going to be playing a card, passing your turn, they have to play a card, and so on and so forth. You can play a card in front of you, you can play a card from your hand. You can also choose to move your characters around the domains and influence different parties. You can also move your characters up the bravery track and as you do that you're going to gain certain things and if you want to go the cheaper way you can actually give your opponents negative cards the cards that negatively affect you so you can do things faster in the game but it's going to cost you as you continue to use all your cards eventually you're going to run out of things to do in which case you will end your turn and you can choose to either take a cube from the recess area or you can choose to draw a card from the neutral card drawing area after everybody has done so after passing you will then partake in a vote voting will affect two specific parties sometimes it'll affect maybe uh, maybe the activists will be against the criminals and you can choose to have the activists succeed or have them fail 
And when you do that, certain things will happen. Sometimes the cards in front of you will leave, depending on who is in front of you helping you out. Or you're also going to gain specific things if you're a certain party leader, and so on and so forth. After the vote takes place by people randomly putting their hand in with either different resources as well as the chip they want to vote for, then you will start the round once again by drawing cards and putting all your things that you used upwards so you can continue the game until finally somebody has reached four victory points and victory points can be secured through a number of ways and that is how you win the game the first two four victory points is the winner let's go ahead and take a look at the game so let's go ahead and show you how to set up Home of the Brave. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the tutorial cards, which you would normally use to start the game if you have never played before. But I'll just show you a basic game of three players and how to set it up. The first thing is make sure you have all of these neutral cards right here. And you're gonna be dealing out three of them into these three spots here. And every round you're going to then be removing these and putting three new ones in. You're also going to have one of each color cube in this area here. All of your voting cards will be right here. The game preparation card, depending on the number of players for two up to six players will be right here and this is the mall area where you're gonna have all the cubes this says for a three-player game have five of each type and then randomly put, put all of these into the bag and then you're gonna randomly draw out nine from the bag and put into the mall area so I'm gonna take all these guys put them in here shuffle 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 and pull out nine of these guys here one two three four five six three more and there we go that is going to be the bag of stuff. We're going to leave the rest in the bag here and we're going to move this to the side. The starting player can be anybody. We'll just go ahead and give it to her. And then we're going to make sure that everybody has their own setup. They each have their own unique character. And these guys are already pre-set up, so we'll just show you Tess. She's going to have starting resources, which is going to be three of these blue cubes here. She's going to have domains at level one, which is the outer circle, which is here, for blue and for pink. So now she's got her areas here. Every player is also going to get decks of cards. A player deck comes with one, two, three, four, plus the tutorial deck. And in which case, you're going to be taking two of these star cards and adding them to your hand. Make sure you shuffle them all up first. You're going to take three of these cards here, which are your first starting cards. Then you're going to take this deck and this deck, and you're going to shuffle all of these cards together with the remaining star cards, just like this. What's also really cool about this game is on the back of the player cards here, you can actually turn this over and you're going to have a little deck area where you can place all your stuff. You're also going to get starting cards here. These have a little start flag on them. These are going to be starting cards that you'll be allowed to use throughout the game and they're going to be uh, basically two infinites and a negative card that can affect you not positively. Take all of these nasty cards that hurt you right there, the secondary cards right here, and your first set of cards right here. And also, you're going to be getting a negative card from each of the other players. They also got one from you. And you can use these to negatively affect them. So now you've got your hand of cards, you get your starting items and your decks all set up, as well as your starting influence. For all currency, you'll be using these little things here to hide them so that nobody else can see them. Just go ahead and take your color and hide just your currency, nothing else. So in as you can see, it's a larger area, smaller, smaller area and a larger game. But you get the idea, use these to hide your currency so nobody knows what you got. Also, go ahead and set all your characters on the starting line for the path of bravery. And I think then you're about ready to go. Let's go ahead and talk about turns. So the game's set up and now you've chosen a starting player. After you've went ahead and set down your three first starting cards, we'll just take a look at the blue player's cards. The, Democ uh, the Democratic Party helps is one of them, and then there's the Democratic Politician Test. The third card you're going to get is the Democratic Party requires loyalty. If at some point the Demo par uh, Democratic Party loses a vote, a negative thing will happen. It's just a card that you start with that can negatively affect you throughout the game. And once it's been done with, it gets discarded and when you suffer whatever penalties. There's also additional cards like this in the neutral deck that can be played on you, so be careful with that. You've also got these two cards to start with. You can have four infinite cards in front of you. You can also have additional infinite cards in front of you, but those are lobbyists that you can lose. These ones here, if you ever have to remove one of them because you have four and you want to put a new one down, you have to discard a, a one that you already have. But you start with these two. These ones will allow you to take cubes from the mall. This one says you can take two of them, or you can take a money from the bank, and this one says you can take one cube, or you can take two cubes from the, the uh, pile, put them in the bag, shuffle them up, pull out two to the bank, and then draw two. These two are both optional, and you can use these or discard them if you want when you get new uh, 
uh, new infinite cards after you've already had your four. So you can use those, and that's by tapping them. So most infinite cards are going to involve tapping. Once you've tapped them for the round, you can no longer use them. You've used their ability. Another option you can do is play a card from your hand, whether that be a card that is a negative card that affects your opponents. You could do its first ability. And if you meet the requirements for the bottom area, this says having three cards that have E on it. This one is just one card, but if you have all three E's, you can actually do the specific special ability or ultimate ability that will really negatively affect somebody. Uh, you could also simply discard a card if you'd like and it'll give you a certain um, currency on the top right hand corner. If it's not a currency it's going to be a domain shift or a loyalty shift in which you'll go from zero to one or one to two on the chart and that will actually give you benefits as you play different cards. Whenever you choose to play a card from your hand there's going to be a cost in the gray area and then there's going to be a benefit in the white area. This one says you need to pay a whole bunch of these bravery points here and then it's going to gain you one victory point. You can also pay additional bravery points to gain another victory point. If you can get four victory points you win so that's really the goal of the game right? Uh, and there's other ones too. Some of them are going to involve you being the head of specific parties and you'll get some kind of benefit. Some of them are going to involve you having to pay specific colored cubes and you're going to be able to gain money and this is an infinite card and so on and so forth. Whenever you play a card you got to use it and if it's infinite you just go ahead and tap it and use it and you can use it next round. Other ones are going to be instantaneous in which you'll just pay the cost, use the card and then it'll get discarded. Uh, as well as whenever you play a negative card, a negative card that affects your opponent it's going to go straight to them and it'll go into their their a bottom of their negative deck. When you play a card past turn, everybody's going to do that over and over again until you can no longer do anything. Now, you could also go along the path of bravery, and that's going to cost you bravery points that I'll show you below. And after you're done disc uh, discarding all your cards or playing all your cards, you can then pass. And when you pass, you can pull a cube from the recess, or you can pull a neutral card, in which case then you're going to let everybody else finish and do the same thing, and then the vote begins. When the vote begins, you're going to draw a vote card like this guy here, and you're going to do whatever you're gonna do a vote and everybody's going to start with a black and a white little token here and you can just select one of those along with as much currency as you'd like and you're gonna vote for whatever you believe is right the activists against criminals for instance if the activists succeed you're going to lock all the mob cards and you're going to also put out four of these yellow cubes into the the mall. If the activists fail, then the mobster, whoever owns, whoever's party of the mobster is going to get two glory, as well as putting four mobster uh, cubes into the mall. And so that's going to be up to you. Additionally, if you have any lobbyists in front of you and they do not, uh, and they fail the vote, so if they have a little mobster icon and the mobsters fail this, you're going to have to discard all those cards that share a similar symbol. And after that, you're going to put the vote aside. Remember, uh, currency is only worth what people say it's worth. So kind of, if somebody puts down their, the, the yes and three currency and somebody puts down the no and two currency, it'll be up to the group to kind of decide which is more important. And if nobody can make up any of their minds, then it actually becomes a tie and everyone loses. You can also, at any point in the game, trade or do any kind of bribery and all that kind of stuff as well. Let's go ahead and take you below and show you a couple turns of the game. So we're now back to the board and as you can see I've set everything up and every player has their hand. We're going to start with this player and then it's going to go this way. And the first thing they're going to do is either choose a card from their hand or they're simply going to tap one of these guys here. And normally you're probably going to want to tap these here. You can tap this guy here. That's going to be it and let him get him uh, some cubes. And you can look at his hand to see if there's anything he wants. Okay, so this is going to cost him two cubes. So he'll want two cubes and you can select whatever color as you want and you're gonna put them hidden in your resource area so nobody can actually see these because they're being blocked by a wall after he's played his card or tapped his card he's gonna end his turn and the next player is gonna to get to go and that next player can look at his hand as well and like I said before you can choose to discard one of these cards and actually move up a ladder so for instance I can discard this card here it's a star card though which is pretty good but I could move one of my characters up the track here so he's blue so I can move him up here if I discarded this card but let's go ahead and do something that's a little less powerful how about this one right here we can discard this card here we'll just go ahead and put it over here and when we do that the top of the card says you can move up one of the tracks so he'll move Blue uh, will move up this track here, and now they are the Democratic Party leader, which can be useful in certain areas. Like, for instance, this card at the bottom here says if you're the party leader for yellow, then you're going to be able to do this in addition to whatever it is that, for the cost and the ab ability, as well as the additional thing. Now, let's say you're the party leader, and somebody else plays this card. You can then determine whether or not you want them to actually do this or not, and they can bribe you. So that's where politics comes into the game. But he's discarded his card, so he's going to be done. He's going to end his turn, and the next 
player is going to get to go. Once again, looking at his hand to play a card or choosing to tap one that's in front of him. So uh, let's see here, what do we want to do here? These are all, he can choose to discard this card for money, or he actually has two red cubes to start with. So he can discard these guys, put them into the pile over here, and play this card. It's an instant, and it says for two red, you're going to gain two money. And money is just another resource in this game. Also, there's another thing on the bottom here that says additionally. If you choose to use this, this uh, card as an addition, you actually have to give one of your red cards to somebody, and then you would gain the additional currency of three additional money. Remember though, red cards negatively affect you, and your opponents can play them at any time they want on their turn as an action. So this here would actually let, let the other player that you gave this to look at a card from the, your hand, and then remove it from the game, as well as gaining one glory point. So it's very, very nasty. I was going to give that to him anyway. This card would then get discarded, right? And the game would continue going around. You can continue playing cards, tapping them until you have nothing left to do, or you choose, decide to pass. If everyone chose to pass, then they are able to select any of these cubes from the resource area. They can choose to select any of these cards from the neutral area as well. There's three types of cards, mainly from the neutral area. You've got this one over here, which is actually going to be a card that is given to somebody else. And whenever this party, uh, fails a vote, this negative thing will affect the person who has the card in front of them, which says give two negative cards to a selected opponent. Oh, that's not very good. And then discard this card from the game. This is a lobbyist, which is what I was talking about before. When you get this guy in your hand, you can play him. He counts as an infinite symbol. He'll stay there as long as he possibly can until a vote of that symbol fails. It's going to cost you a certain amount to use him. And then he has an ability, like an infinite ability. Pay $5 to put time onto this card. When you add the second time, gain a victory point. And finally, you've got these secret vote cards, which whenever uh, either of these two things happen on the vote, so if ever Democrats, um, or Republicans or Democrats ever successfully win a vote, you can play this card right after the vote to have something unique happen just for you, whether it's gaining five glory points or stealing a negative card from an opponent. After everybody has selected one of these things and ended their turn, maybe he selected this and he decided to give it to him. Maybe he selected this card to save for later. And then this player took this card. Then this round is over. You're going to add new cards here. Everybody's going to untap all the things they had tapped, as well as drawing three cards from the deck here, and they're going to put them into their hand. Everyone would do the same. And also, if you're looking at this glory track here, People on their turn could have also spent the currency that is related uh, to these areas here to go up, whether it be 10 glory points or five glory plus giving two negative cards to an opponent, eight glory points or four glory points and two cards to another opponent. See, they're faster to get up this track, but it's also more dangerous. And you're gonna get these rewards. This reward here is allowing to draw from your secondary deck, which is stronger than your first deck and can give you additional points and whatnot. Uh, also additional two currency. This means you can play an additional one infinite card in front of you, plus two currency. This means you can push through an opponent on a specific domain and make them go backwards. When otherwise, whenever somebody would be here and you had to move up here, you'd actually have to battle them with currency and whoever played the most currency is actually going to steal the spot. And finally, a victory point here in money and a victory point. Two victory points is halfway to winning the game, so it's very important to recognize that. Also, uh, after everybody's gotten all their cards, untapped everything, and everything is refilled, you're going to have a vote. You're going to flip over the top voting card and see what it says. This one specifically is a hurricane warning, and it has you choose two different things. You can choose the white, which says you have to have you have to warn everybody to stay in indoors, or you can choose the black, which is remove all the dangerous trees that could cause damage. Either one of those is an option, and everybody's going to take one of these two types of cubes here, or these types of tokens, and they can vote. They'll hide them in their hand and vote. Along with as much currency of any type they would like. When everybody reveals, whatever has the most is going to pass, and if there's a tie, you look at whoever has the most currency and debate that way. If you cannot settle a debate, if everybody fails and it's really nasty that way. In addition, it tells you what the party leader uh, of a certain area gets depending on who wins. So like, for instance, pink would actually gain one glory, or if this one was the winner, whoever was here would gain one glory. And additionally, what is going to go, in, so if this one won, you'd put two of each color, Q, into the bag, shake them out, and put them onto the mall for additional cubes that can be used throughout the game. And additionally, too, uh, if somebody had a card to play based on the party that won, like for instance, I was talking about this card over here, Democrats, Republicans winning, they could play this card after the vote, as well as any lobbyists that did not pass this vote, so any heart-shaped lobbyists that were on the field, 
uh, if this did not pass, if it was actually this one that passed, all of them would go away. You would then discard this card, and then you would start the next round, and you would continue playing. You can gain victory points from any of the cards in your decks, as well as going up this track here, spending the glory points. And there's a plethora of different ways of doing that. Whenever you're going to put more cubes into the mall, you're going to always put them in the sack, shuffle them up, see what happens, and pull them onto here. So it's always going to be randomized to a certain extent, but you can kind of manipulate this bag. The play will continue until somebody reaches four victory points and once that happens the game is over and they are the winner. The last thing to note is don't forget to move the starting player marker after every round so that everybody gets to be the starting player each round. All right that is the basic idea of the game let's talk about it. So a couple caveats before we go into the review. The first thing I kind of messed up on was this little star symbol. Normally the star symbol is going to mean that it is whoever is in that domain. So if it's a pink star, everybody in that domain is going to be affected. If the star has a crown on it, it's going to be specifically designated to that party leader. You're always able to trade resources with anybody and make up any deals you want. If, for instance, though, you make a deal, say, hey, I want to give you this... Uh, if you give me this, that player can say, okay, you give them that thing, and then they can say, no deal. However, if they say yes the second time, then it is frozen, it is locked, and they have to do it. Picture it like if I call up somebody on the phone and ask for a political favor, they then say yes, I do the thing for them, and then they bail on me in front of the public. That's kind of how it works. However, if in front of the public they were like, yes, I'm still agreeing to this, then you're going to get it. So there's a lot of backstabbing involved. All right, let me tell you what I think about it. The first thing is this game has a lot of moving parts and a lot of different symbols, so it can be a little little difficult to grasp. However, I got this game very, very quickly for the fact of how many different things there are and how many different decks there are. There's quite a bit of setup in the game. It's a thicker game. It's going to require some strategy. It's probably not for younger audiences. If you don't like politicking in your games, you're not going to like this one as well. It has a lot of politicking, and in fact, the more players in this game is the better. And if it, and we played a two-player variant of the game, it was okay. But the more players makes it so much more fun because that's when the politics get involved. When you're playing two players, you go, do you want to do this? They're probably going to say no. Or uh, if you play a pol policy leader card, the leader, if he's not you, is going to deny that request. It's not going to be a lot of trading and bartering and whatnot. So definitely this sp sweet spot for this game is four, five, and even six players. Has a lot more momentum in it. Has a lot more yelling and screaming. It feels like diplomacy in some ways. And I really like that aspect of the game. It flows very well. It's very simple. And you you always feel like you might have a chance of winning. We played multiple times and everybody was really close on the mark and somebody always just sneaked in there at the end. There are some nasty deals that can happen. A lot of trades that can seem like they're going to be good and they turn out to be terrible or even better I offer you a really good deal and you give me something for it and then I lie to your face right then and there and you're screwed. It's not like Cosmic Encounter where it's a lie that will affect you later. This is a lie that happens well sorry it's, it's not like a lot of games it is like Cosmic Encounter where it's a lie that will affect you right then and there. It's going to happen you're going to be like you just lied to me but the thing is if you lie that's going to create a lot of distrust between the different parties and it does feel like a political game because of that. You also, during the vote, have to determine what is worth more than other things and other currencies. And you can kind of determine, oh, this is worth more, glory is worth more than this, or cubes are worth more than this. And because of that, it can switch the votes based on what you think is going to be passing. And that affects your board, that affects what things you're going to be getting, and the vote makes a really interesting little change in the mechanics of this game. It has quite a bit going on. It has hand management, it has tableau management, and it has the voting and the blind bidding. That is super cool. I never feel like there's nothing I can do on my turn, and when I really do feel like I want to settle, I then get to choose a neutral card or a cube, which is super useful in this game. It benefits you. Uh, when I played one of the times when I was playing a three-player game, I thought I was in dead last, and I kind of was. But you can cheat on the bravery path by giving away nasty cards and having and lowering your bravery count to get up that ladder. I only needed one more point to win, but everybody else was so much closer, so that's why I just gave all my negative cards away. And I almost won. I was so close. I felt the tension. All I needed was three more bravery points to do it, but because I gave my negative cards to the player, he had negative cards to play on me that removed the bravery I had. So I ended up losing, which worked because that's what happens when you try and cheat your way to the top. Sometimes you're not going to be able to succeed. And with this game, it does it with shining colors. You've also got these secondary cards, which are very good. You can choose to go up the bravery track faster and even illegitimately if you want to get the better cards. And you're also going to be using those negative cards that negatively affect you. Some people can take them with the cards they play. The lobbyists are useful and 
it changes the board, how it functions, how it works. You're always going to be trying to manipulate each other in this game. It's thick, it's big. That, that, that being said though, the game is super fun. There's not a lot of artwork to it. Um, the components are great from what I see so far and I'm expecting to be even better for the Kickstarter. But I'm interested to see what kind of artwork there is. And I hope there's going to be some artwork because a lot of our cards are just simply the, the black and white explaining the different combinations and whatnot because there's quite a bit of symbols in the game. Overall though, this game is super, super fun. I will definitely be playing this game more as we continue throughout the campaign. Maybe I'll even do a live play just because I enjoyed this so much. Uh, four, five, six players, solid game, thick, heavy, wonderful. My stamp of approval. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video and want to see more, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. As well as checking out Home of the Brave on Kickstarter. This is a dipl diplomatic nightmare, political nightmare, and it can get nasty, which is super fun. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And the giveaways are raining down on there, so you go ahead and click on a bunch of different things and do a couple things, and maybe you'll win a game. We've had a lot of our more recent um, continual people who do it every day. They've been winning stuff, and I'm super happy to see that. So congratulations to you all for winning the games. Uh, check out my friends and family, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and of course, Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. Wonderful tutorials, giveaways, and news. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I'll see you next time.